This topic is about the sampling distribution and the central limit theorem. Okay, before I explain this diagram, I'm gonna just draw a few real life uh, graph style. The purpose of doing uh, data analysis, we always wanna get this kind of normal shape. If we get this kind of normal shape, then this is ideal data distribution. So we can just apply z-score, which means standard normal distribution concept right away. However, most of the case, we won't get this kind of graph. In real life, we may get this kind of a data set, or we can have maybe like this kind of data set, or sometimes we have like um by model data set that's the actually real life data cases then you know we cannot apply standard normal di distribution concept for all these cases here okay we cannot use it then do we have to throw this uh, data away no we want to make this kind of non-normal data distribution to the normal distribution. So that's what we just call sampling distribution basically. Okay? Which means we want to make all this kind of shape to the normal shape here. That's what we are doing for this video basically. Okay? Yeah. Now I'm gonna just delete all this picture and then explain other things more. Just select one diagram only. I'm gonna left this unusual diagram set, this one here. Okay, then how can we convert this to normal graph shape here? Basically, actual data doesn't describe normal shape anymore. So instead of doing this, we wanna find out mean value instead. So, if you look at this diagram here, then among the population data, we set up some number of samples and we want to find their mean value here. So, this means group number 1, group number 2, group number 3, and group number 4, and group number 5. So, in this case, based on how many data samples you choose, the mean value will be different and then also, the distribution may be very different, actually. So, I'm going to explain what sampling distribution is first, and then we're moving on central limit theorem. Because data is the normal shape, so we sometimes find out uh, some sample size here. So, let's say we choose n equals 2. Just to explain really easy, I only choose number 1 and 2. If I choose data 1 and 2, then I can find total 4 different cases of mean cases here. So 1 and 1 then becomes 1. 1 and 2 which is 1.5 and 2 and 1 which is 1.5 and 2 and 2 which is 2, right? So if you wonder what I did, just to find their mean value. Okay, so that's the case here. But if I just make n equal 3, then case will be much more. So n equal 3, so I'm going to choose only 1, 2, and 3 here. Good. Then I can generate from mean value from 1, 1, 1, which is 1, right? 1, 1, 2, which is 1.33, something like that. And then 1, 1, 3, which 1.66, something like that. And then now 1, 2, 1, which is 1.33. And then 1, 2, 2, which is 1.66. And then now 1, 2, 3, that equals 2. And now we can also do 1, 3, 1. This is 1.66, then 1, 3, 2, which 
two and then one three three which is two point three three and then we go until three 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 then mean value become three basically okay now I just did few of cases but when you look at this case already 1.5 repeat right so we have repeating value here so when n equals 3 I only generate 1 1 1 2 mostly 1 3 3 but we can uh, find out many different repeating value uh, 1 2 and then 1 2 3 and then also 1 2 something like this so now we increase sample size more and more then we can conjecture there will be more repeating value okay however when you look at this carefully this mean range is very tiny so this case between 1 and 2 right now n equals 3 then mean values between 1 and 3 here okay so because of uh, the cases number all data can be repeated so total case will be n equal to then total becomes 4 but n equal 3 then total case will be 27 how do we know because uh, data can repeat so this case 2 to the square power and this become 3 to the third power okay then now you can conjecture what if n equal to 4 n equal to 4 then now total number of cases will be 4 to the fourth power so it become 256 and n equal to 5 then 5 to the fifth power so it become 3125 and n equal to 6 then 6 to the 6th power so it become 46656 six, six, like this here and then this case uh, mean range becomes 1 to 4 and this mean range become 1 to 5 and this range become 1 to 6 here which means n equal to 4 case the 256 data is between range 1 and 4 so which means all the mean value will be 1 2 3 for all this range here so now you may be able to find out like 1.6 and then 1.7 and maybe 2.1 2.3 all those value anyway all data are 256 data is between 1 and 4 now if n equal to 5 then there are 3125 data is in the range 1 and 5 here if n equal to 6 then 46656 data is between range 1 1 and 6 therefore as you see this kind of phenomena so there are many repeating data exist when the sample size is increased and then you know the more data actually we can find it therefore uh, this video conclusion is the size n is increasing then more data exist between small range I mean in a small range therefore the data becomes normal shape and get taller that's the conclusion here so I just indicate maybe picture 
then n equals 2, then you can just generate like this. But n equals 3, then it gets taller and maybe a little bit further here. n equals 4, then it gets much taller. Go a little bit like this. n equals 5, then something like this. And n equals 6, then even taller. Something like that. Okay? Then what if we fix the mean value? Then we will continue for next video.